Greetings and salutations! This isn't a real video, it's just me testing out some equipment and I'm going to take you along. This is going to be the first video I record on a computer I just picked up. To give you just a little bit of background, those of you who have been following this channel for a long time know that I've had a couple of machines now called Big Boy and they were both Dell workstations. The first one was a T3500 donated by Esnix, a fellow YouTuber. That's E-Z-N-I-X. I recommend his channel. It was very kind of him to give me that PC a while back and it developed some issues so I bought another one. It was a Dell T5400 which I thought would be a newer model but it wasn't. It actually turned out to be a bit older but I thought it was cool because it had two Xeon processors on the motherboard. Four cores each with no multi-threading. Monster machine and this is what I have been using for quite some time. Big Boy the second. Now this machine had some disadvantages. First was the fact that it really didn't do virtualization well because there was an incompatibility with the way Linux virtualizes and runs virtual machines and the processors that it had. So I really couldn't make it work very well. I was doing some virtual machines on my son's gaming laptop that has a i7 processor in it, but that one was also getting slow because you may recall that we had some problems with Intel processors and they found some vulnerabilities and when they fixed those it just killed the performance for virtual machines. So I sort of just stopped doing it here on the channel and because it just got to be such a pain well, what I was thinking is that what I really needed to do was just get an all-AMD system and get away from Intel and also get away from NVIDIA because what really put the last nail in the coffin for the T5400 is the fact that it had an NVIDIA Quattro, I think it's a Quattro 570 card. Not really sure about that number, but I do know that it took the NVIDIA 340 drivers. And guess what? In 2020, NVIDIA said, well, we're not supporting that anymore. That hardware is now too old, and so we're not going to deal with it. They open sourced a lot of their drivers at the time, which was great, but it kind of left a lot of folks in the lurch who were still running this old hardware, and trying to replace the card with another one was cost prohibitive. Anything that would fit in the machine that would be modern and up to date was like $300. And do you really want to dump that kind of money in such an old machine? I don't. So I've been looking around for a new machine to replace it uh, while running Linux Mint 20.3 on it. Because the latest distro that I could run, at least in the Ubuntu world, was Ubuntu 20.04 or Linux Mint uh, 20.3 because that gave me access to the 5.4 kernel series in Ubuntu, which had those drivers in it. So, uh, I was looking around for computers, and I came across this wonderful machine right here. Now, those of you who know what an EverX GPC is are probably going, huh? Yeah, I know, they were kind of cheap, low-end machines. I found a listing on Newegg where they were talking about them, and they were kind of, you know, dumpy, cheap computers. Well, this fella has a computer store in upstate New York. It's Blue Star Computers here on eBay. And he got this machine in, and it had a dead motherboard. So he decided to turn it into Franken PC. <laughs> and he got a new motherboard and put in a new AMD Ryzen 5 3400G processor and 32 gigabytes of RAM and it is actually quite the machine and for 300 bucks on sale I couldn't pass it up so if we scroll down here and take a look at what's in this computer uh, we have uh, Linux Mint 21.1 Vera was installed on it when I got it I did reload it um, unfortunately uh, this fellow uh, it's the only complaint that I have didn't understand about doing an OEM type install that allows the end user to create their own account so he essentially created an account with no password so when you turn the machine on it logged right in that's really not good protocol for Linux but I sent him a link to my video where I show you how to do that and so maybe he'll watch it um, he put in an ECS B 
350AM4-M2 motherboard. And I'm reading this for those who have low-res devices. I know some of you are looking on your big screen going, you don't need to read it to me. Well, I'm going to do it anyway. We have the CPU, which is an AMD Ryzen 5 3400G, 3.70 gigahertz. Now, arguably, this is not the fastest Ryzen PC out there. It's uh, four cores, multi-threaded to give you eight uh, threads or eight virtual cores, however you want to look at that. That's fine with me. I don't need more than that, gang. I don't do anything that really demands a great deal of CPU. Uh, very cool here is a Samsung 970 Evo Plus 1 terabyte NVMe M2 drive. Yeah, it's fast, let me tell you, and it threw me for a bit of a loop. I'm not used to NVMe devices, and I've got some things to learn, I found out today. Plus, this has a Blu-ray DVD drive in it, and you may be asking yourself, well, what do you need that for? Optical drives are going the way of the dodo. Well, I have thousands of CDs, and I actually burn CDs every now and again for my own enjoyment and to distribute to other people. I work for a radio station, and it's very nice to have a built-in drive that I can plop a disc in and get audio off of it. I do have some DVDs as well, although I don't usually watch them on the computer, but you never know. And a Blu-ray drive will let me play Blu-rays, even though I don't own any. Um, just never got into that format, but it's, I've got it. There it is, right? And it's built into the machine, which I like. It's in a five and a quarter bay. I know that a lot of people who want to have access to optical media these days buy a new machine that doesn't have it, and then they occupy a USB port with one of these USB uh, optical drives. Uh, not good enough. Sorry. Nope. I like having the big fat drive and uh, getting the best quality I can out of it because I work for a radio station, and a lot of times the files that I create will end up going on the air, and I'm very picky about this sort of thing, so leave me alone. As a matter of fact, the other day when Gordon Lightfoot passed away, I ended up ripping a bunch of stuff off a CD to put into the system at the radio station, and it you know, always comes in handy. We got the Radeon Vega graphics, AMD HD audio. We've got a, um, a Seasonic power supply, which is something that I've not heard of. I don't know a great deal about that brand. It's 400 watts, it says here, which... It's a little light, but for what I'm doing, I think it'll be okay. I'm not terribly worried about it. One of the cool things about it is it's actually got a real switch on the back of it, you know, like on, off. That's something I haven't seen on a power supply in a long, long time. Uh, give me your opinion on that if you know anything about these power supplies. And then um, there's a PCI slot here that's got an Intel Wi-Fi Bluetooth. It's an AX. 200 combo that seems to work really well no proprietary drivers needed to make this work uh, it plays 60 frame video beautifully i was watching some really high-end 4k stuff uh, off of youtube and it just amazingly uh, clean and smooth so i'm very happy about that and that's with uh, just installing linux mint debian edition now it wasn't just that the Linux Mint Vera was kind of screwed up. It was the fact that I really wanted to run Linux Mint Debian Edition. I've been playing around with this particular distro. I did a video about it not too long ago, and I really, really like it. So I was saying that when I did upgrade the hardware, that this is something that I wanted to do, and uh, it's working wonderfully. So if I run HTOP here, and we'll go ahead and... Uh, Let's go ahead and make this bigger for everybody. Make it so it's easier for everybody to see. If I run HTOP, you see that we have very little CPU action, even though I am currently capturing uncompressed audio and... Actually, no, it's compressed audio because it's FLAC and HD video, 2K at least. So that don't look bad at all as far as that's concerned. We're using about a gigabyte of memory right now and it's got 32 total in the machine. I think some of that is being used for video because it is a, an internal GPU, which is fine with me. And when I installed 
Linux Mint Debian Edition, I used the automatic installer. I did it once, trying to manually partition the drive, but I don't know a great deal about NVMe partitions, which is a little bit different, something that I hadn't worked with before. So the first time I did it, the computer wouldn't boot, and I felt stupid too, because I installed it, and then I dumped all my data on the machine, and then it wouldn't boot, and I was like, how do I fix this? I don't know. So this is honest truth. I just said, reinstall. Let's start over. So I blew everything off the drive and uh, just let it automatically set it up. And when it did, it set up an 8 gigabyte swap space, which I'm not really sure why it did that. So if we look at LS block here, you'll see that uh, the drive is divided into three partitions. The first is the EFI partition there. The second would be that big swap space, which is never going to get used. So I'm not really sure why Debian chose to do that because I know that uh, Linux Mint based on Ubuntu these days when you install just creates one big partition after the EFI partition and then they create a swap file but this is working so it's okay it's no big deal I'm not gonna miss the 8 gigabytes I'm not terribly upset about it and then finally I have 923 gigabytes available to the system and no I do not have a separate home partition but with Linux Mint Debian Edition, it's really not that big of a deal because of I, the fact that I don't plan on doing a whole lot with this. i am probably upgrade it when the next one comes along, and that'll probably be a year from now. I'm not terribly worried about it. So no big deal at all there. All right, so let's go ahead and get out of here. And I have the system information back here. Just It's the same stuff. Just had that up. Now, one of the main reasons, as I was talking earlier, I couldn't really do virtual machines. Uh, so one of the first things I did after I got this system set up was install the very latest VirtualBox software from Oracle, downloaded it directly from their web page, put it in here, and installed a virtual machine. Now, let me tell you something. It's been a long time since I fooled around with VirtualBox, and you definitely lose what you don't use because I used to be an expert on this and I was fumbling around like a newbie so this is actually about the third install that you're gonna see here because I was playing around with settings and oh that oh I forgot about that and that didn't work why didn't that work I didn't understand what was going on so I set up a virtual machine here to run Ubuntu with all of the the little speed up tricks and stuff like that and I'm using NAT for the network. I really want to use Bridged. Let's use Bridged. I just noticed that. See, those little things like I forgot. So let's go ahead and start this thing up. And it is fast on this uh, M2 drive. Just super fast. So why is it that I want to run virtual machines? Well, those of you who have watched the channel in the past know that I used to do a lot of videos in VMs. And it's because I can show you things that I wouldn't ordinarily show on my system that I have to have running every day for work because this computer is my main computer. And when I do stuff for the radio station, I use it for things that I do for the radio station. And I have a computer from the radio station that runs Windows 10 but then I'll have both of them running at the same time, you know, come on. And I don't want to do anything that would be destructive or whatever. So with uh, a virtual machine running like this, we've got Ubuntu 2204 running here, uh, especially with uh, the AMD processor and the RAM and the speed of this thing. I mean, I can show you guys how to do all kinds of stuff. So let's look at HTOP here. Now, when I set this up, I gave it three processors about four gigabytes of RAM. It's taking some of that for video and just turned it loose and let it set it set itself up. And I want to thank uh, John Spoonermore for helping me to uh, point out some settings there. When you run like HTOP or something like that, a program that you know you leave by pressing Q, do you also end up trying to close the terminal and getting that message? Because I do this all the time even though I know better. But uh, anyway, I want to thank John for pointing some things out that I had actually forgot about. So if I get out of full screen mode here, 
and we go look at um, the controller for the virtual machines uh, I only have would you do what I asked you to do thank you uh, we can go in here and look at the settings like for instance it's um, really a good idea for the display here there's a there's kind of a hack you can get 256 megabytes of video that's a command that you can send so I, I actually remembered to do that uh, what else did I want to uh, show you guys real quick here as far as the storage is concerned like um, of course everything's ghosted because it's running like use the IO cache on the host here which is actually checked and make sure that the system knows that it's running an SSD when you install the operating system that way you get the proper alignment and the fastest operation just stuff like that he reminded me of that thank you John I appreciate it so now that I am getting back in the swing of using this I'll be able to do things like distro reviews and all that kind of stuff guys isn't that cool so yeah very cool indeed and this machine it just um, like I said I, I the only thing that threw me for a loop was the NVMe when I was installing it and I had to do it twice and the second time I just let it do it automatically and that way it, it got me out of trouble because I usually like to do manual partitions but I just turned it loose and let it do it it was fine with me so let me go ahead and power this off just want to shut down man that's all I want to do so anyway that's all I got for this video I just wanted to show you guys uh, the machine here it's kind of sad that the big boy the second here is going out the door and is going to be going to the recycling place because of that video card issue I mean I would like to be able to pass this on to somebody but I can't really do it because I don't want to leave them on an older version of Linux uh, with this kind of ticking time bomb this card that won't be supported and so therefore it's just EOL Time for this machine to go away. Sad but true. But now we have Big Boy 3. <laughs> and you're probably asking, why do you name it Big Boy and just keep naming each computer you get Big Boy? It's because that's in a lot of scripts that I use. <laughs> and it would be a big pain to go around and change that everywhere for this machine. So every machine that I get is going to be big boy until I get one of them little mini PCs that mount on the back of the monitor then I might think of changing the name and I'll call it something like uh, tiny although I already have a computer called teensy uh, teensy is a little EEE -E -E PC ASUS thing one of them little netbooks that's been converted into a file server and uh, I call it teensy because it's so small thanks for watching We'll get something up here again soon. Comments, suggestions, love it. Like the video if you liked it. And if you uh, really want to help, share it with your friends. Get some views. Uh, as I was talking about in the last video, uh, YouTube is just simply not showing people my stuff. So if you like this, click a like to let the algorithm know that this is something that you want to see, people want to see, it helps a lot. 